few nuts and bolts left over from the engine rebuild. Also check the radio and it works, very important. Hello and welcome to another video. Right, she's back, back on the farm and back in the thick of the action. Um, we'll do a little bit of an update of, on that later in the video. What's happening this week? Well, before we get into that, I just wanted to uh, thank everyone for the kind comments, the likes, subscriptions, and uh, watching last week's video and indeed other videos. Thank you for that. So many nice comments, and it's always a pleasure to hear from so many nice people and know that those people are out there enjoying the videos. So thank you for that. Um, right, this week, what's going on? Well, 3075 will be in action. We're going to start into the soil again. The sun is back from its two month vacation in Spain. So we're gonna make the, uh, or take the advantage of the weather and get back at that. I know I had mentioned last week that we would do some more tidy up. We can do that another day. That's that. Uh, we also have to mark out the uh, foundations, uh, levels, etc. We, we, we took the levels last week, now I need to mark it out, dig that out. So there's a fair bit of uh, soil to come out of there still, which I thought we'd pretty much done, but we haven't. So I'll get into that in the next video. And I think that's probably going to be the video. So, oh, I'd also do an update on that. I think I mentioned that, but we'll do an update on the 3075. Uh, what happened to it? Um, what repairs uh, that was done there? And so on and so forth. A bit more of that later in the video. So let's, uh, let's beaver on and uh, get stuck into it. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Right, so I've got some uh, marking paint, tape measure, and the drawings. Let's, uh, let's get stuck into lining out where the foundations are gonna go, and then we'll start digging. Okay, here we have the foundation plan. The trick is to convert that to here. Right. I don't know if you can hear me, it's very windy. In order to find this corner, we use a process called triangulation. We measure down the width of the shed, which we know is 9 meters to the outside wall. So therefore, it's got to be 17 meters from this corner behind you to that corner over there, in theory. I hope it works. Nine meters is there. Right, I think that is the site marked out. Uh, different levels on it for the different for the foundation levels. So that's done. Now we'll go put these on the tractors swap the trailers over and get geared up to get this bus fired up and get some of this stuff out of here. Looks like someone has mashed the uh, the stand on the freezer. Don't know how that happened, but Right, well, I'm back in the back in the cockpit of my favourite tractor, the 3075. 
schoolboy here didn't lift the uh, pickup hitch. Making too busy making videos and not paying attention. Farm safety. Right, now we're good to go. So, as I said, I'm back in the cockpit of the 3075. And I'm not sure if I inserted it previously or it's gonna be after this, but I'll do a little bit of a video, or maybe I have done it, I can't remember, on what happened to 3075. But my dad said something which was very, very true. And I was complaining about the uh, what happened to the tractor and all the rest of it. And my father said that as long as the issues on the farm are outside the door and not inside, who cares? Because a tractor can be replaced, uh, a animal can be replaced, even the shed can be replaced. Anything that happens outside the farm, it can be replaced, or outside the house, it can be replaced. It's when it's inside the house, it really matters and I'm not going to mention him but there's a very famous and popular uh, farming YouTube channel and he made a lovely comment on uh, a video my video last week which I think him which I thank him for in fact I thank everyone for their comments and um, but he did mention that he wasn't going to make it to the plowing because uh, he had a an issue at home and we wish him and his family all the best so uh, I'm not gonna mention him you know who I'm talking about he knows who we're talking about so uh, yeah all the best there and hope everything has come good okay now let's get a bit of fuel into this and uh, I'll do a little bit of a chat about what happened to the 3075 right folks well as you can see from behind me she's back my favorite tractor on the farm is back on the farm. What happened? Well, it's a bit of a long story. However, uh, I did mention in the last video uh, a little bit about what happened, but we'll, we'll have a little look at it here. In here, this is the block. For those of you who don't know about engines, I'm no expert, but I know a few things. The, uh, the bearing in the crankshaft uh, rotated, I said in the last video, destroyed the block. Why did it do that? Well, we got the insurance company out to look at the 3075 and surprise, surprise, it's not covered. Uh, they deemed it as wear and tear and therefore no claim. This is why they are billionaires. Anyway, um, that aside, they did give us a uh, very detailed report into the engine and what happened to the engine. And from their report, they understand that the oil pump on the engine failed, which resulted in a, uh, let's, we'll call it a negative, but a close to, net, close to negative oil flow around the engine, resulting in the bearing in the crankshaft seizing. When it seized, it lost its housing and spun on its housing, therefore uh, damaging the block. Now, as I have pointed out previously, um, this, this is one of my favorite tractors. In fact, this little tractor is quite, a, let's say a rare little bus now. And it was worth fixing. Uh, it wasn't going to be scrapped. It was always going to be fixed. I've said before, it's not cheap to fix and run these old things, but it was worth fixing. So what's going to happen now? Well, the tractor's back. We're going to give it some light duties, but the mechanic's advice was to just get it stuck in. So we'll get it maybe onto the trailer this weekend if we can or whatever. Um, the season's closed down now for silage and whatever, so there won't be any of that going on. Um, so the tractor will be pretty much surplus to requirements for the next few months over the winter time. But we'll get it some duties just to get the engine going and, and you know, get it bedded in and keep it, uh, keep it good. 
How did we fix it? Well, what we did was there was a number of options. There was the option of the aftermarket short motor. Now, for those of you who don't know what a short motor is, I didn't know what it was either until I started investigating this. But a short motor is basically the bottom half of the engine. It's basically from the head down, rebuilt. Uh, and that is a, I think it's a Chinese uh, aftermarket product. Um, I don't know anything about those. And, you know, in my life experience with some products that come from way over there, they haven't been great. Now, people who know things way more than me may say, yes, that's the way things are done now. And it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly good. I don't know, but please let me know if you have an experience of, you know, these short motors and how you've been getting on with them. Um, I just didn't know. I looked at a brand new Perkins short motor. Whoa, crazy, crazy, crazy prices. So that was out the window. Uh, the other option was to get a second hand block okay and that's the option that we went down we got a second hand block and we completely rebuilt the engine from the bottom up so it's all good it's all brand new in there uh well the original crankshaft's in there but it was uh i think we yeah we maybe got reground the head was skimmed uh i think the injectors were done up um new bearings new seals all that stuff so it's effectively a brand new engine in there. And I did go through a number of uh, tractor breakers to see if I could get one of these blocks. And to be honest, the only, and, and nobody's sponsoring this video or anything like that, but I, I will say to them, I'm entirely grateful to them, was uh, Ned uh, Murphy's in I think Wexford they are. Those guys were absolutely brilliant. They knew exactly what I needed. They had it there. You know, I was talking to other guys and they were like, oh, send me photographs of this and send me photographs of that. They were like, I know what you need. We have three of them. Here's one, two, three, and, and you know, it was sent up in no time. And to be fair, I, if I was getting parts, those are the guys I'd be going to. And I stress nobody's sponsoring any videos around here i'm just found from my experience working with them they were fantastic you may have a different experience you may have somebody else you know that's fine i'm just telling you from my side so they sent up a a replacement block second hand block i think it came out of a 6150 or a 4000 series 42 something anyway it's it's in there and it's working that's the main thing so, uh, yeah, she's looking well. She's back. We will uh, get the tractor into use on the channel. And I've just noticed that the 3075 is backwards because the camera and the phone is backwards. I don't know. I give up. Anyway, there you go. Uh, for those of you who were asking, there she is. Back in all her glory. And we will... Uh, get her into use and you'll see her on the channel now um hopefully working hard and no more touch wood uh misdemeanors okay so there we go you know there's not many things i can criticize about the 3075 but one thing is there's very little space in the cab for a mag mount for your phone to do videos I guess back when they designed 3075, nobody was actually doing YouTube and making videos, so we'll forgive them for that. Right, let's get into the shed here. See if we can uh, get some fuel. A little bit of a valet job wouldn't be a bad thing in here actually might do that when i'm here right seems to be a few nuts and bolts left over from the engine rebuild 
I guess we don't need them. Reminds me of a uh, funny story. Many months ago, when I was a kid, I took my father's uh, LP player. Uh, LP is like a record player uh, apart um, because I thought I could. And when I put it back together again, I had a whole handful of screws, nuts and bolts, and all sorts of things that didn't go back in again. Needless to say, it never worked again. That was the end of that. Hopefully not the case here. Right, just going to give the 3075 a little bit of a valet. Deserves it. And uh, then we'll be, uh, just try to be good to go. Okay, let's see, uh, 3075 dieseled up. I need to check the back end oil. Um, I'll do that in a second and swap the hitch over. But she's pretty much ready to go. Also check the radio and it works. Very important. You know, you know I'm like with radios. So she's ready to go. We'll go up the field now and have a look and see um, what the state of the field's like. See if we can get up the field. If not, we're gonna have to go to plan B. Yeah, looking at the state of the field behind me here. We ain't getting up here, no way. This is so much wetter than uh, than it was. Uh, was it last week? Last week we did the, two weeks before, two weeks ago. <laughs> Forgotten. So yeah, this is so much wetter than it was uh, a couple of weeks ago when we did this. And uh, you can see, it's just too wet, there's no mission. So, we'll go look at plan B. Right, this is plan B. So I'm currently walking out. I don't know if you can hear me, it's very, very windy. Turn around this way. Uh, behind me here is a good road, which leads out to another little area that we've dumped a few bits of soil and things. So. No issues with the wet here. This is a good road. So that's where we're gonna go with the soil. Uh, yeah, that's the best plan. Cause we ain't getting up that way. No chance. Here we have my favorite animals, not the evil wool. Remember last week I showed you the Works were ongoing on the 698T. Well, this is some of the panels that came off it. Look at the state of this. Totally corroded. And the other one here is also totally corroded. There's no way you could put those back. And works are still going on, the 698T. Here we go. My brother's beavering away on this, trying to uh, get it filled up and uh, get it ready for painting. Right, so, balloting done, diesel in, oil checked, back end oil that is, hits changed, let's go stick on the trailer. Right, um, we're going to put the Fraser on the 6290, however, I need to get this trailer out of the way to get the tractor to get the 6290 out to put diesel in it, so I'm going to have to swap them over again. Should have thought that at the start. Anyway. Definitely not efficiency. Actually, actually one of the things that I really like about the 62 series and later models, of course, is that when you're backing into a trailer, the pickup hitch, pickup hitch, if we can describe it properly, has a tongue, they call it a tongue, it slides out and you can hook into the trailer. This tractor doesn't have that. 
3000 series never had it and you have to like basically break your back to check that it hits properly and uh, yeah that would be a little negative for the 3075 but only a tiny little negative as we know this is my favorite tractor right finally got the trailer all in there that was a bit of a session we we'll sit over the other side of the yard we'll move the weeks trailer out of the way and we'll get the 6290 out 6290 out said that properly and get it full of diesel check for oil Right, so the Weeks is on the back of the 75. However, it's not empty. It's got scrap metal inside, so now I gotta go and pop this out somewhere so we can get the trailer empty, ready to go. In case you're wondering why I'm just tossing this uh, scrap metal off the side of the trailer randomly, I say not. Got a little scrap pile going on here. So, uh, grab a few more bits and bobs and uh, take it off to the uh, scrap merchant. Outside of the videos, I have been taking a lot of this stuff away. Tons of it. Just a few more to go, but a little scrap pile anyway. So. We'll get that away in the next few days.
I uh, deliberately parked the two trailers side by side for a little experiment. You can see the vast difference in the size of the Fraser and the Weeks. Look at this. Maybe hard to see, but yeah, the Fraser is considerably bigger. Right, well, I'm going to lift these gates out of the way, but they'll do there for now. But as you can see, the yellow mark, there it is, somewhere there, there it is, that's the yellow mark. That is the outside of the uh, foundation, not the wall, because the wall will be running in line with this pillar. So that's the foundation, the outside of the foundation. Um, and then down below, We've marked out the walls, the foundations as well. So that's good to go. Uh, Digger man will be here in the morning. I think we can just push those gates back actually from the bigger rather than take them off. So I'll put them back up again to get the cows in here. And judging by the weather, it won't be too long until they're in the shed, in the cubicle house. So that's it for this evening, I think. And we will reconvene tomorrow morning. Right folks, well that is it, that is today's video, um, it was a little bit of a uh, celebration too because uh, the Flying Fergie Man has got a new logo and it's down below, you'll see it, it's uh, a Ferguson with wings, yes I was up all night thinking that up, um, yeah, anyway, it's a new logo for the, for the channel and um, yeah, Again, thank you for your support and thank you to everyone who has, who has liked and subscribed and commented. Keep it coming. I read them all and no, I don't, I know I'm not getting thousands of them, but I do read them and um, I, I am so thankful of the support that uh, everyone has provided. The channel has burst into life and uh, it's all thanks to you guys. So from me, thank you so much and uh, please uh, take care of yourselves. Good luck, thank you, bye-bye. What we had going on the last time is up the left.